are two sisters who believe that the purpose of life is to enjoy, create, and have fun. We believe that as humans, we can have anything we want, and things are always working out for us. Experience has taught us that the path to getting everything we want begins with ease. If you believe in miracles and happily ever after, or even if you just want to, then this is the podcast for you. Hi there. I'm your host, Kayla Rain. And I'm your co-host, Adria Shea. And welcome back to Attract It With Ease. Good to see you, Adria. How's your week going? It's going really well. Thanks. How's yours? Mine's been good. It's been busy, but good. And we're almost to the weekend, so I'm happy about that. Yes. Always a reason to celebrate. Absolutely. Well, let's jump into our gratitude because I can't wait to get to this week's topic. So tell me what you're grateful for today and why. I am grateful for sunshine. I love the way it feels on my skin. I love the fact that it can melt the snow. That's happened a few times this week. It's been snowing and I've needed to drive someplace and it's warmed up enough that the roads were not slick. So I've been particularly grateful for that these last few days. I bet. I'm also really grateful for public transportation. We have access to clean and not crowded public transportation that allows me to get pretty much anywhere I need to go within the state. And it's been a blessing. So I'm grateful for that as well. That's incredible. I don't use public transportation often, but I do appreciate it when I need to use it. Yeah, exactly. And the third one, I may have said this, but I'm grateful for family. I'm especially grateful for our siblings and our parents. And the thing I love about family or our family in particular is you always have cheerleaders that are just rooting for you and supporting you. And it's a great feeling. That is a great feeling. I love our family too. I hope everybody has at least somebody that they can call family. That's a cheerleader for them. Well, thank you. So I'm grateful for a few things today. Number one, I'm grateful that I always have more than I need. I think our listeners know by now that I live in a tiny house. So, and when I call it a tiny house, it is tiny, like really tiny. If you could see it, you would die. I have the world's smallest closet and I just can't fit everything that I have in there. I downsized a lot just to move in, but I'm constantly amazed at how much I have and that even with as little that I have, I always have more than I need, whether it's food, whether it's clothes. Um, and I'm going to put this out to the universe money too. I always have more than I need. <laughs> But another thing I'm grateful for today is coworkers. We've gone through some changes at work. We've lost some staff. We've hired some staff. And because of the changes, I have had to pick up responsibilities of other people. And we finally, I think, are at full staff. And I'm so excited about that. So excited to be able to just finally get back to doing my job and having people to help with other things. And it's just nice to have other people to help carry the load. So I'm so grateful for my coworkers. And then the third thing that I'm grateful for today is contrast. Do you know what I mean by that when I say contrast, Adria? Well, I can guess. And my guess is that life wouldn't be nearly as sweet without the bitter. Is that what you mean? I love how you said that. You always put things so eloquently in a way that I would never say that. But yeah, that is what I meant to a degree. And if it wasn't, I'm going to steal that because it was so beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) No, actually, this is this leads us into today's episode. Um, I really have been thinking a lot about contrast because. Well, there's a number of reasons, and I might have actually mentioned this on a prior episode. I honestly can't remember because I've talked to two different people about it in the last couple of weeks, and so I can't remember if I also talked about it on the podcast, but we definitely have not done this as an episode before, so I want to get into this. I have been reading a book recently, and one of the things in the book that stood out to me was it was talking about contrast and how it's one of the wonderful things about this life coming in and living on this planet and having 
differences, differences of opinion, differences in choices, and how the fact that we can come here and have contrast, that we don't have to have everything predetermined for us. We can make our own choices. We can make our own decisions. And it doesn't matter if other people agree with us. It doesn't matter if we're following the norm or the rules or the expectations. Like that's that's one of the positives about this life. And in this book, it was talking about that. And I had never really considered it before, but it it, it explained. Essentially, it said that we all chose to come to this life, to to be in this experience. And I realize that there may be some people with religious beliefs that don't believe that. I choose to believe that I chose to be here. And I also believe that I choose whether or not I want to stay here. I feel like every day I make the choice as to whether I want to stay on this planet. I have the ability to take my own life. I choose not to, thankfully. But... um, Because I have the ability to choose not to be here, I also believe that I chose to be here. And in that sense, part of that choice, I think we kind of knew what we were signing up for, whatever that meant. I think we, we knew what this experience was going to be to a degree, what we would be. Um, putting ourselves up for kind of the challenge that we were accepting by coming here. I choose to believe that. And in this book, it also stated that, that we, that we chose to come to this life, but that one of the reasons we wanted to come was because of the contrast, because we would have the opportunity to make decisions and move thought and life forward by the decisions that we make. And it also said that we would not have chosen to come here if everything was just predetermined for us. And I'd never considered that before. I thought, you know what? That's so true. How boring would life be if we were coming here and everything had to be a certain way, if we had no choice? And I realized that there are a lot more freedoms in the United States than other countries. So there are probably people in other countries that feel like they don't have choices, but you do have choices. You have choices about what you wear each day. You have choices about your thoughts. You have in the U S we have choices about what we want to do for work, what color we want our hair to be, whether or not we want to have tattoos. I mean, we have so many choices and there's going to be people that don't agree with us, but those choices are part of what makes this life exciting. And that's what I mean when I say that I am so grateful for contrast because it wasn't until I read that in this book that I actually had even considered that that was something to be grateful for. But I am so grateful for contrast. And it's something that I want to talk about for today's episode. So before we jump into all of that, Adra, what do you think about everything I just threw at you and this whole con- contrast concept? I've never thought of it that way, but I love it. I think it's fascinating and you're right. It's what makes life so exciting. It's the spice of life. I think the option to basically life is like a choose your own adventure book and who doesn't love those? Yes, yes, exactly. And you know what? I think that's our generation. There's probably people listening to the podcast that are like, what is a choose your own adventure? They were amazing. We grew up with them. And you're reading the story and you have options about which direction you want the story to go. And then you turn to whichever page you chose and the story changes. So that is exactly what life is like. And I love the idea that we would not have chosen to come here if everything had been pre-planned out. Meaning if we didn't get any say, why would we have come? And how boring would life be if we were all exactly the same and if we all believed the same things. And what I love about understanding that that's something that we should be appreciating, it almost flips your mindset about when you get frustrated when someone doesn't agree with you or when someone does something that you don't think is right. You can get upset. For example, it could be, well, here, I'm going to jump right into this. <laughs> I do not <laughs> do want it. to get into a big religious conversation. I don't want to get into a big political conversation. But here's an example. Rush Limbaugh just passed away. And it is very controversial in the United States because people either loved him or hated him. There's not a lot of people that were really on the fence. So there's people that are so sad that he passed away. And then there's some people that are just cheering the fact that he's gone and speaking poorly of him and the person that he was in this life. And whichever side of that coin that you sit on is fine. 
But guess what? There's two sides to the coin and people get worked up about it and people get in arguments on social media about what kind of a person he was or what all of that means. And that's just one example of the contrast. We can sit there and be frustrated about the things that people are saying or the things that people are doing, or we can look at the glass half full and say, oh my gosh, how exciting is this life that we have contrast and that people don't agree with me and I can have my own opinion and it can be completely different. So today's episode, Adrian, I think, and you can disagree with me, but I think relates directly to this. And this episode is called, It's All Pretend. So (laughs) we actually had a conversation about this a long time ago, and I don't remember the details, and I don't even know if you remember the conversation at all. But this is a concept that I came up with, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago, that is a comforting thought of mine. When we talk about choosing a better feeling thought, (laughs) this is one of my better feeling thoughts, and that is that it's all pretend. Do you remember at all having a, a conversation about this? Just vaguely. Yeah. I remember the topic. None okay. of the specifics. <laughs> That's okay. I don't remember the specifics either, <laughs> but here's the, here's my whole thought about it. I sometimes feel sorry for myself, like most people or feel bad about something that I'm going through, or I feel stressed about a situation. And when I'm in those negative space spaces. I don't know if I'm making sense. When I'm there mentally, a thought that feels better for me is to recognize that everything in this life is all pretend. It's all made up. And I know that sounds really ridiculous, but let's kind of give some examples. Let's talk about all the things in life that are made up. Okay. So let's talk about credit. Credit is one that I love to joke about because credit is completely made up. Everybody in the United States has a credit score. I don't know about other countries. I don't know how credit works in other countries, but in the United States, if you're over 18, you have a credit score and it's a number that somebody somewhere one day made up that other people bought into and decided, yes, this is your number. It is attached to you and you can change it. It is an evaluation and we have decided you are credit worthy or not credit worthy based on this number. Adria, do you feel like credit is something that's made up or do you feel like it's a real thing? I think that you're absolutely right. It's made up. And it's, um, to clarify, it's a number that determines the likelihood that you will repay a debt if you were to borrow money, say for a house or a car or something. And I think it matters a lot to someone maybe who is trying to get financing for a house or a car. but really, if you're paying for something with cash, then it doesn't matter at all. And it definitely never determines your value or even really your ability to repay a loan because it's just a predictive figure. You know, it's not taking into account your your credit rating is not taking into account your income, only your past payment history. Correct. Correct. But even someone who's maybe never even had a payment history, someone who's never had any credit could have a low score simply for having no credit. (laughs) They have no history. So they're already deemed, well, we have, we can't guarantee that you'll pay on time. So your score is going to be lower than someone else's who's proven they can pay on time. It's just one of those funny things that I think a lot of people in life feel bad about if they don't have a, a good credit score. And I think nowadays with everything that's been going on with COVID clear back in 2000, Eight, when the economy crashed in the United States, a lot of people lost their houses, people lost their jobs, people's income changed drastically. There's so many fluctuations in life that affect credit. Someone could go through a divorce and it could affect their credit. Someone could have um, medical expenses and they can't keep on top of all of their regular bills or they can't keep on top of the medical expenses. Maybe they didn't have health insurance and so it affects their credit. And so there's this number that's attached to you that's that we take as validation as to whether or not we are worthy or we're a good person or not. And it's something that we easily can use to make us feel bad or judge ourselves or judge another person because somebody made up a number. So it's not something that existed when life on this planet started. A human 
or a group of humans decided, oh, let's put this plan into place and we will assign a number. So credit scores, number one, that's one of my favorite things to joke about. Credits is all pretend. So folks, if you're sitting out there feeling bad about having bad credit, or if you are judging someone else for having bad credit, guess what? It's all pretend. It really has nothing to do with who you are, how good you are, the kind of person you are. So that's one example. Here's another example. Adria, what is the thing you're sitting on right now called? Air. <laughs> you're sitting on air? <laughs> no, a, a chair. Oh, I heard air. I was like, wow, I, she's squatting. My sound she's must have recording. cut out. No. Oh, I wish. Yeah, I'm levitating. <laughs> wow. This is a, a fun podcast. Okay, chair, you <laughs> must have cut out. And I apologize for that. Yes, it's called a chair. So let me ask you, who decided it was called a chair? I'm not sure. That's a great question. <laughs> What about the thing you're talking into? What is that called? Microphone. And who decided that that was what it was supposed to be called? I don't know. I never thought about this. Somebody somewhere did because not all languages are the same. Right. So, okay. So now let's talk about languages. Who decided what anything in any language was going to be. Who decided a language was a language? Who decided a word was a word? Who decided, no, that's not English or that's not a word? And what about all the words in the dictionary? And who decides what's going in the dictionary and whether it's a word or not? I mean, YOLO, is it a word? Mm, probably not in Webster's official Yeet. dictionary. Yeet, is it a word? <laughs> I don't, I don't, that is definitely not a word. <laughs> Says who? Who decides? Who who makes any of this up? It's all made up. Adria, your name is made up. Mom and dad made up your name and they said, this is what she shall be called. And forever forward, you have been called Adria. <laughs> but guess what? That's just, you're just, a, you're the same as another being. We just decided, oh, she's an Adria. I'm a Kayla. They're a Michael. That's an Adam. Like we all just make things up and everybody goes along with it. They're just like, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. She's Adria. Yeah, she's Kayla. She looks like a Kayla. And then sometimes people go, you don't look like a Kayla. You look like a Grace or whatever. We have those things. <laughs> so all of that's made up, right? Let's talk about some other things. What about ideal body type? How many different types of bodies over the history of humans have been considered ideal? Wasn't there a time that like a very voluptuous, like, heavy body type was considered a perfect body because only the wealthy could afford to eat well. And so that was like something people looked up to was being heavy or overweight. That was a thing, yes. right? Who decided that right. that was the yeah. way we were supposed to look? I don't know. The, the poor people probably. How about now? <laughs> Even culture to culture, there's different expectations of what's beautiful. There are cultures where having an elongated neck is considered beautiful. They put rings on top of rings to stretch their neck because they think that's beautiful. But who decided that that's how we're supposed to look and who decided that's not how we're supposed to look? Like these are all things that are pretend. None of it was here when we got here. We all made it up. How about the laws of the land? Speeding. Who decided how fast you could drive on a certain road? Somebody, somebody decided and somebody else agreed and suddenly that was law, but it was made up. There's nothing that says that you physically cannot go slower and there's nothing that says you physically cannot go faster, but there's a law that says you can and you can't. There's all these things. And when you consider all the pieces of life, you start to realize that every single thing in life is made up. Everything. It's all made up. Our addresses, whoever put together the grid system and the zip codes and the borders of the states, you look at some states and you go, how did anyone ever decide that was the property line and why is it split over here to here? It's, it's just silly. How about fashion? About every 10 years, fashion changes, right? What was in in the 70s was not what was in in the 80s. And what was in in the 80s is not what people wore in the 90s. But what's funny is fashion tends to come back around. 
So who, yes. who decides any of that? But think about some of this. And I know that all of this is like, okay, yeah, Kayla, I get that it's pretend, but here's the piece we're missing. The fact that it's pretend, we don't really pay attention to. What we do is we sit around and we feel bad about things that really are not who we are or what we are is what we identify with. And we identify with these made up ideas. I, I sometimes watch TV with Dan, my fiance, and more often him, but sometimes me will comment on people on TV. Maybe we comment on the way that someone's hair looks. We think they look goofy or whatever. And, and we just make these comments and we have these judgments. Sometimes they're about us. Sometimes they're about other people. But I'm at a point in my life where it starts to almost make me feel sick when I think something negative about someone because I realize, like, who cares if someone has a mullet? Like, if they have a mullet and they love it, then why should I care that they have a mullet? That's their choice. That's what they came to this life for was to have a mullet. But if I make fun of them for having a mullet to their face, and I'm sure someone with a mullet gets made fun of all the time, I, I guarantee you in the U.S., if you have a mullet, you're hearing that your hairstyle needs to go back to the 80s or whatever, right? And people that don't know what a mullet is, if you're listening somewhere and you're like, what's a mullet? You should Google it. Because what you do they say? It. It's um, business, business in, in the front. front, party in the back. <laughs> Is that the phrase? <laughs> I mean, so yes. you have a pretty short haircut on the top, but you've let the back of your hair grow long. So it's not all the same length. Um, it was really popular in the 80s. It's not as popular now, although I hear it's coming back. I hear it's coming back. But there are a lot of people that have a strong stance about that hairstyle. And I guarantee you, if you're <laughs> rocking a mullet, someone's going to say something. Same thing if you're rocking a mohawk, someone's going to say something to you. And you know, when you decide on that hairstyle that someone's going to say something to you. If you had a braid, do you remember the braids that were in and was that also the eighties? Yes. So your hair. Uh, probably night the nineties. Yeah. Like a Jedi 90s. braid. Eighties and It 90s. was you, typically a guy. So I guess girls had a lot, a lot of girls had short hair back then, but it would be a pretty short haircut with just a one long strand that was enough to braid that would be well past your shoulders typically. <laughs> so the rest of your hair is super short, but you have one long strand that hangs down that, that you wear braided. So if you had that kind of a hairstyle, you know, someone's going to make fun of you, but here's the thing. The more somebody makes fun of you, you probably start to feel bad about yourself. You probably start to feel like, oh my gosh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't be this way. But by remembering, oh my gosh, this is all just pretend somebody made, somebody made that up. Somebody said, my hair is not supposed to be that way. Somebody decided they didn't like this look and everybody else was like, yeah, no, that's terrible. You should not wear your hair like that. Adrian, chime in. Tell me what you think about this conversation so far. <laughs> yes, I totally agree with you. And I think that this message is something that it would be nice if we internalized at a young age. Just to, I'm thinking back to what we talked about previously about looking to others for validation. Yes. And you're right. If this if this doesn't matter, then it should not impact how we feel about ourselves. And yet it does. So often. it does. It does. And here's the piece of it. Every single thing, like I said, in this life was made up. Everything that exists as far as inventions was made up. It wasn't here before humans were on the planet. Clothes, shoes. How many years were humans even alive before shoes were invented, let alone the way that shoes look today? All of that's made up. So the concept or the idea of shoes was made up. The idea of the internet was made up. The idea of being able to Record sound was made up. Telephones were made up. Lighting was made up. Your bed was made up. Everything, well, maybe your bed wasn't made today, but you know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The whole, the whole world is just made up. And so number one, we, we take these things that are pretend, none of it matters. And that's the thing is when you're feeling sorry for yourself or you're feeling bad or you're in the state feeling like you're not good enough, that's the better thought that I love to focus on is none of it matters because it's all pretend. 
Like, why am I worried about this? Because it's all pretend. Then there's the whole topic of, well, whatever happens after this life, if anything, does this life even have the impact that we, or the emphasis that we put on it, those decisions or the way that we feel in this moment, does it matter in the big scheme of things? And that's another conversation, but all of it is just pretend. And to me, that's such a good feeling thought, but it all relates back to the contrast. That's what we're here for. We're here to make decisions. We're here to create. We're here to be different. We're here to not agree with everything everyone else says. So it could be religion. You don't have to agree on the same religion. It could be sexual orientation. You don't have to agree. It's okay if people don't agree with you. You might think it should be a one way. You might have a preference, but that doesn't mean everyone else is going to agree with you or that they're going to have the same preference. And it's great that they're allowed to have their preferences. It's anything. It's the way we dress. It's the way we look. It's what we do for a living. It's how we spend our money. Not everyone's going to agree with how you spend your money. Maybe you don't spend your money. Maybe you save every dime and there's people that won't agree with that. Maybe you choose to invest in cryptocurrency and people judge you for that. Like, why are you throwing your money away? And then other people are like, why are you not investing? Like, you could be a millionaire right now if you had just started investing. There's all these conversations, but none of it's even real. It's all pretend. Money is not even real. I mean, think about it. Think about money in the U.S., Adria, (laughs) we don't even have gold to back up the dollars that are printed in the United States. So it's a piece of paper that somebody said, okay, we're going to make it look like this and it's going to have this amount of value. And everyone's like, yeah, I like that idea. That's a good idea. I agree with you. I'm going to put that amount of value on this piece of paper that nobody can back up with gold. Like it's just, we'll just keep printing more. It's all made up. It's all made up. But yet we can sit around and we can feel bad that we don't have a certain amount of money. We can sit around and feel bad that people make fun of the fact that we're not wearing name brand clothing. We could sit around and feel bad about the fact that somebody makes fun of the way our name is pronounced. Adria, you and I have maiden names. It's the same one. I'm not even going to say it on the podcast, but I guarantee (laughs) if other people heard us say it, they would laugh and make fun because it is not a pretty last name. But guess what? It's made up. Somebody made it up and none of it matters. And yet we place this importance on it. So I want to shift gears on what we're talking about a little bit, because I think I've kind of made my point on that. But where I want to head with this is to have the conversation that literally everything begins with a thought. Everything, everything that's ever created, every invention that's ever made begins with a thought. Somebody thinks it and however long they think about it or talk about it or do something with it, you know, eventually it turns into something or it doesn't. I mean, we have those, we talked about this on a prior episode about how we have business ideas all the time and then you don't do anything with it. And then someone else does the same thing and you go, oh, dang it. That was my idea. (laughs) Yes. So whether or not we do that, everything starts with a thought. It could be the thought of what we're going to call something like our child. It could be the thought of something we're going to create. It could be the thought of what we want to wear tomorrow. It could be the thought of what we're going to buy or how we're going to spend our money. Every single thing that exists in this life starts with a thought. It's all made up. But here's the exciting piece of that. That means we can make up whatever we want. There is contrast. We don't have to have everyone agree with us. We get to come to this life and we get to create anything. We can decide what we want to do for work. And you know what? If we can't find what we want to do for work, we can make up a job. We can make up a company. We can say, I'm going to make this product and I'm going to sell it. It doesn't even have to be a product. You could say, I'm going to record this audio tape and I'm going to sell it. It doesn't even have Mm -hmm. to be tangible. You could say, I'm going to provide this service and someone's going to pay me for it. And there's people all day, every day, everybody, not everybody. There's so many people out there starting their own businesses, people that are self-employed, 
people creating new apps, people inventing new products constantly. And we're constantly coming up with, oh, I wish someone would make this. I wish someone would make that. I'll tell you one, folks, anyone listening, I will let you steal this idea because it's brilliant. Nobody's made it yet. We need it. I don't want to do it. We need a pill. And need is a strong word. We don't need it. I would like a pill, a pill that I could take <laughs> that would instantly make me look tan. I look better when I'm tan. It's not healthy to tan. <laughs> so I, you know, there's all kinds of tanning products, but they smell and they streak and they get, they stain your clothes and whatever. We need a pill that will change the color of our skin so that we can look tan. Obviously I'm a very white chick because I'm saying this. I'm sure other people are like, oh my gosh, that's the last thing I need is a tan. But (laughs) for me, that's something I would like. If someone wants to steal my idea and invent it, then reach out to me. I will be your first customer. There's all kinds of these ideas, guys. (laughs) There's so many things, but this is so exciting. And as we talk about the law of attraction, I think it relates in two ways. Number one, let go of the guilt and the negativity surrounding what needs to be or what's supposed to be or what's expected or what people believe. Don't worry about the norm. Don't worry about someone else's opinion. Don't worry about what is the status quo. Challenge the status quo. So that's one half of it. Like use this, it's all made up to be your happy thought when you're feeling down. But then the other piece of it is, Let this empower you to contrast is why we're here. We are here to create. That's one of the first things that I say on the intro to this podcast is we believe that the purpose of life is to enjoy, create, and have fun. I absolutely believe that that is one of the big reasons that we are here on this planet is to create. That doesn't mean you have to start your own company, but you know what? If you want to go out and do it, go do it. You can do it. Everyone else is doing it. You can do it. If you have no desire to do that, that's fine. Create something else. Create a masterpiece. Paint something. Sculpt something. Write a book. Write a story. Decorate your nails pretty. I don't care what it is. Create something. Create a nursery rhyme. Create a, I don't know, anything, anything. Adria, jump in here and kind of tell me what you think about this conversation. I'm kind of hung up on the job thing. Um, I really love that idea of not necessarily, I'm trying to apply all this to myself right now. So I'm just in my head thinking about me. Um, So I don't intend to be an entrepreneur or start my own business, but I, I think it's very exciting to think that I can create something that meets every quality I'm looking for in a job, meaning there's something out there that's flexible and allows me to travel and allows me to kind of choose my own hours and is a mix of public interaction and introspection and so on and so forth. So I find this very exciting, this whole topic, because you're right. Every, every single thing starts. I'm just reiterating here. Every single <laughs> <love> thing <laughs> started Eating as a thought. <laughs> yes, no, I've always been fascinated with the idea of software as a service. It's um, like a category of businesses, that, and there's quite a few of them in Utah where I live, where people just saw a need and without creating an actual product, uh, I guess you could call software a product, but Nothing without tangible. creating an actual tangible product, suddenly there's a whole business that exists solely to meet a need that I'm, I could go on and on. I just, I think it's fascinating. It's totally fascinating. And I have run across just this week, two companies, one's been around for a while, one's brand new, but both of them, the whole concept of their company is they have a website to connect people with products someone else is offering. And I'm like, so really you're not doing anything. You're just a liaison. You All you do is make a website <laughs> and then you have other people offer their products or their discounts or promote their events on your website. And then you get a mailing list and tell people all about these events and these products in this website. It's literally like they don't do anything except connect people. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to do that as a business, but that's brilliant. 
there's two people, two, two companies out there. There's probably thousands more, millions more that are out there doing these kinds of things. I'm like, all they did was made a website. How many things could you do with just a website? Like there's bloggers that all they have is they just write every day. They just blog about, yes, you know, clothes, Twitch streamers. I don't believe people can make money. You can make money just playing video games and like streaming it for other people to watch you play a video game and watch how you react, you know, if monster jumps out or whatever. It's incredible. It's just fascinating to me. It is fascinating. You look at all of the different ways that people make money these days. And I didn't mean to turn this into just a a conversation about work, but I'll tell you what, if you are not doing something that you 100% absolutely love, you can do anything you want. In fact, I'm not going to give away my business idea. I'm not going to tell you, but I just told Adria last week because I have been in that space. I have said, look, I like my job, but it's not something I see myself doing for the rest of my life. So what do I want to do for the rest of my life? And I've sat down and just like Adria, you just lined out. I said, well, I want this kind of schedule. I want this kind of flexibility. I want to make this kind of income. And that's the great thing is that there's a lot out there that I can do. And I do have an idea. I have had some inspiration, something I am going to move forward with. It's not all that uncommon to what anyone else is doing. Trust me, it's not anything incredible. But I was like, oh my gosh, other people are doing this. Why can I not be doing this? And the whole idea is everything is, everything begins with a thought. It's all a thought. So I feel like this is so empowering and so exciting to number one, just understand that everything is just pretend. It's all made up. And because it's all made up, we can make up whatever we want. We can set our own rules. We can decide what's right for us. We can decide whether or not it hurts our feelings if someone makes fun of the way we look or our hair or our name. We can decide what we want to do for work and where we want to live and how we want to make our money. And every piece, every piece of this life, this is what we're here for. This is what we signed up for. And if it wasn't that way, if it was, no, you have to come and you have to abide by these rules and you have to follow this religion and you have to do this as a career and you have to dress this way. And every day you've got to work, wake up at this time. And this is the time you have to go to bed and you're not allowed to say these words. That's another thing that's made up. (laughs) <laughs> you're not allowed to say these words. Those are bad words and you're not allowed to say them. <laughs> that is controversial. <laughs> <laughs> We're pushing some buttons today. But if it was all predetermined, like if there really was only one right way to everything, then why would we have come? Why would we want to be here? That sounds terrible. And how boring would life be if we all agreed? It would be so boring. Yeah, it would. We'd all have mullets. (laughs) No, we would not. (laughs) (laughs) Or mullets would be banned, one or the other. I think there's more people on the side of the (laughs) anti-mullet. But then that's a democracy. But I don't know. I feel like this is an important topic. I feel like it's empowering. I am, as you can tell from my enthusiasm today, it's something that's really been on my mind. And I think part of why it's been on my mind, I said this last week, but I have kind of been going through these ebbs and flows lately about life and how I feel about things. And so as much as I believe in the law of attraction, it doesn't mean that I don't have bad days. And when I have those bad days, this is a thought that makes me feel better. Whatever I'm thinking about that feels bad. Number one, like we talked about in one of our prior episodes, if I'm feeling bad is literally because I'm not aligned with my inner being. Whatever thoughts I'm thinking are in contrast to what my inner being is at its core, which is love and goodness and and positivity. So if I'm thinking something negative, I'm not aligned and that's why I feel bad. But the way to pull out of that is to think a better feeling thought. And the better feeling thought for me is it's pretend. Why are you even worried about that? Somebody made that up. That's not even a thing. It's not a thing. Somebody decided it was a thing and everybody else agreed. Why does everybody agree with that? Like who, who decided this was a thing? Stop being upset about it. And then again, like I said, it's so empowering to know that because it's all made up, we know everything began with a thought. We have thoughts. We can create things with our thoughts. And that's what we're here for. So this leads me into our action item for our listeners today, Adrian. 
And I know you don't know what it is. Do you have any guesses? Mm, no, but I think it's going to be um, like <laughs> testing our limits in some way. Ooh, kind of. Yes. Okay. <laughs> here's, here's what I was thinking. I think there's things that I've hit on today that probably rubbed some people wrong, whether it was swearing or sexual preferences or mullets <laughs> or Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> There's probably some topics that came up today that people were like, oh, kind of tread lightly. You're going to offend me. <laughs> <laughs> and even if there wasn't, I promise that there are topics out there that probably would rub, rub you wrong. So here's your action item for today. Listeners, I'm going to encourage you to choose somewhere between three and five. I encourage you to choose five, but if you can only do three and only commit to three, that's fair. Somewhere between three and five items that before this conversation that you listen to today, before you listen to this podcast, these were hot topics for you. Things that bothered you when they came up, contrast conversations. So it could be that somebody talks about religion and if they don't agree with you, you get hot and heated. Maybe it's politics. You don't want to talk about it. If people aren't on your side, maybe you're the person that's on Instagram jumping on all those comments, starting an argument. Maybe you're not. Maybe you avoid it. I promise you there's these hot buttons that you have, but I'm going to encourage you to pick somewhere between three and five and use them as items that you're going to turn around and start appreciating the contrast. So when these three to five topics come up, when you normally would be frustrated by someone else's difference of opinion, I want you to challenge yourself to appreciate the contrast and that we do have differences of opinion and not everyone has to agree with you. Adria, what do you think about that action item? I love it. I love it All because right. I think I think you're right. The world is a more beautiful place because of the contrast. Yep. I wrote a note for myself, give examples. Here's one I didn't mention yet, and we'll end it on this. Pineapple on pizza. It's a very <laughs> controversial conversation. And if you're not from the U.S., you may not understand why, but people are on one <laughs> side of the fence or other. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza. Okay, so that's your action right. item, listeners. We're going to wrap this up with announcing our winner of a bracelet. We have had a couple... Yeah, we've had a couple new uh, reviews, and I'm so incredibly grateful for that. But our winner for this week is JT1244, JT1244, left us a review on Apple Podcasts. JT1244, you are our winner. So send us an email at attractitwithease.com. Oh, sorry. Don't send us an email there. That's a website. You can go to the website and contact <laughs> us. Send us an email at hello at attractitwithease.com and let us know your word, your theme word for the year and your address, and we'll ship you your custom bracelet. Adria, do you want to tell our listeners what I'm talking about? Yes. Every week we will draw one winner from people who have left a review of our podcast on any platform that you're able to leave a review and the lucky winner will be able to receive a custom bracelet with their theme word of the year. That's right. And if you don't know what we're talking about with theme words or bracelets, you can check it out on the website. But also check out our first 10 podcast episodes because there are jumpstart series. Episodes 1 through 10 were designed to jumpstart your ability to manifest anything you want in life. And so we want you to download those first 10 episodes. Episode number one talks about choosing your theme word for the year. We also have a workbook that's free. You can download it from our website, attractitwithease.com. That workbook goes along with the first 10 episodes, our Jumpstart series. So that's it for this week. Adria, it was so fun chatting with you. Remember, it's all pretend. And I can't wait to talk to you next week. Sounds good. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>